his home in Connecticut did. Uh, there are these two people who work for Planned Parenthood, and they were sued by the state of Connecticut under a statute that stated that uh, it banned the encouragement or use of birth control, and they had advised some married couples on what birth control to choose. So they appealed to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled 7-2 in the favor of Griswold, and, uh, so that they wouldn't have to pay the $100 fine. Um, basically, this ruling brought about some broad sweeping change in the area of the, the ability of the court, and in the area of rights for American citizens. Uh, the 7-2 decision was controversial because, of course, it wasn't a 9-0 decision, but it was also very important. Uh, without this case, we do not have the right to privacy that it gives us. This case uses all the numbers in the Constitution. It uses um, the 1st, 3rd, 5th, 4th, or 5th, 9th, and 14th Amendment. Those in, uh, combined to give us this right to privacy. Without the right to privacy, uh, well, just think about what we could have. It would be like 1984. Or could be. Um, on a judicial level, also, it influenced other cases, including Einstadt v. Baird, uh, Roe v. Wade, Lawrence v. Texas, and Bowers v. Hardwick. Uh, and three of the four of those have been in our debates, and so obviously they're very landmark and influential cases. And then on the judicial ruling level, it gave the courts the power to find these different, uh, in combination, use these uh, amendments and these other rights to create this other right, this right to privacy, and then they can use these in other situations where it may not be enumerated in these amendments, but they can use the other amendments that suggest that there's another right and create this right. Um, very important cases and decisions may have been different without the Griswold decision, both because of, because of the right to privacy and because of the right of the court to create these new uh, abilities and, uh, I guess, rights for the people. Alright, um, my court case was Matt vs. Ohio, and basically it was just about this woman, um, she got an anonymous phone call, um, called for her holding a fugitive in her home, and the, um, police force of Ohio did an illegal search and seizure to collect, um, probable cause from her house, and she took to court, and I think she won six to three, I don't remember, I forgot all my stuff today, but Okay, the Matt v. Ohio case didn't really do anything that my case doesn't. It also deals with right to privacy, but on a more specific basis. So really, it doesn't matter. It's just the search and seizure thing that people can't, or that the government can't use um, these pieces of things that they find under an illegal search and seizure in the court. I mean, that's pretty obvious anyway. If it was obtained illegally, then they're not going to be able to use it. Um, my case brought in this ruling also. It, it made it into a bigger scheme with the entire right to privacy on all the different levels, not only on the Fourth Amendment search and seizure level. It, it's hardly affected other cases also, as well, uh, or where my case has affected many other cases. It merely expands the Fourth Amendment also, whereas mine expands five other amendments. Um, they're basically the same thing, but mine brought about broad change and it affects everyone, whereas his case brought about specific change and affects a very small uh, number of people. Um, it didn't really do anything, and like I said, it's an obvious ruling, and it's pretty clear to say that my case has been more influential and is more important both for the courts and for the people. <laughs> And it shows how probable cause can affect a court case. Um, and 